change in the climate since the Industrial Revolution. It's normally associated with global warming, which is the warming of the planet about 0.8 degrees since the mid-19th century. But it's so much more than that. It includes changes in hurricanes, changes in droughts, and changes in floods. Consensus myth. The public think that about 45% of climate scientists agree that global warming is caused by human activities. But in actual fact, it's more like 97% of climate scientists that think that humans are causing climate change. varies. It varies because of factors like carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the sun's output and volcanoes. But the change in climate we've seen since the mid-19th century, sometimes called global warming, is impossible to explain that just with natural factors. We can, however, explain it if we include human factors like increases in carbon dioxide due to industrial processes and fossil fuel burning. of a two degree rise in global warming depends very much on how fast it occurs. If it occurs very quickly, then it'll be very difficult to adapt to and the impacts will be damaging. But if it occurs more slowly, we might have time to adapt, we might better build our sea walls and the Thames barrier higher. So the danger associated with two degrees warming depends as much on how fast it occurs as on us actually reaching two degrees in the end. same thing. Climate is the long-term statistics of the weather, generally measured over time periods of 30 years or more. But what we experience from day to day as the weather are the fluctuations about that long-term variation in climate. So even as the globe warms, we expect to see the weather extremes we've always seen, in some cases amplified. We will see snow in cold regions and we will see more storms. So there will be winners and losers associated with global warming. Uh, in the middle latitudes where we live, increasing carbon dioxide and increasing length of the growing season could increase crop productivity, for example, so we'll have more food. 
Um, melting of the sea ice will allow ships to go over the pole, which could increase trade in the northern hemisphere. And the heating itself will mean, the warmer climate will mean that we'll less, need less heating at home. But in the tropics, uh, low level islands are likely to be flooded by increasing sea level. There may be an extension of the, uh, the ranges of tropical diseases like malaria. And the increased intensity of floods and drought could play out, for example, extension of the Sahara Desert. So the, the winners and losers are very patchy. And in many cases, the losers are the ones that are least to blame for the problem. They vary because they depend on the weather. Solar panels, for example, won't work so well if conditions are cloudy or foggy. And wind farms uh, won't work at very high wind speeds when they're dangerous, or very low wind speeds when there's not enough wind to tur turn the turbines. So in general, we will need some backup if we want to stop the lights going out to ensure security of electricity supply despite variations in the weather. <laughs>